This past holiday season, I took a three-night cruise on Royal Caribbean's Freedom of the Seas, and I have to say that my experience was not at all what I expected. In fact, it was so not what I expected that when the cruise was finally over, I was left sitting and thinking, asking myself what the heck had just happened. For context, I have been a longtime fan and patron of the Royal Caribbean brand. In fact, my first ever cruise was a 2004 sailing on the Majesty of the Seas. And pretty much since that first day on board, I was hooked both to cruising and to the brand. I'd learned to love the promenade, the rock wall, the mini golf course, the schooner bar, and all the other iconic Royal Caribbean features that turned the brand into one of the most formidable titans in the cruising industry. However, it kind of pains me to say that my latest Royal Caribbean vacation in December of 2022 was honestly one of, if not the least enjoyable cruise I'd ever taken. With an obvious decline in quality and service, food, cleanliness, basically across the entire board. In this video, I'm going to walk through all the issues I had on my sailing and talk about some of the ways I think Royal Caribbean can improve the product going forward to prevent the dreaded downhill slide. My sailing was on the Freedom of the Seas, a recently amplified Freedom Class vessel that, while not as large as some of Royal's Oasis Class ships, as you can see, is still pretty darn big. It was Christmas time, we were excited to get on board, and our initial impressions of the ship were overall positive. We walked through the Royal Promenade, admired the holiday decorations, and stopped at Playmakers, the ship's sports bar, for our first meal. My wife and I both had purchased an unlimited beverage and an unlimited dining package, assuring ourselves that this was the best way to capture the full Royal Caribbean experience. I had never actually ordered food at Playmakers before and was really excited to try what I had heard was good eats. And although we didn't eat anything that blew our minds, everything was hot and generally tasty, which is more than I can say for some other restaurants on board, but more on that later. As we left the port and started to explore the ship more, I was pleased to see the resort style upgrades the pool deck had gotten, giving off an exciting tropical vibe, and I was impressed at how lively the ship seemed too. Although I've enjoyed sailings on quieter ships and quieter cruise lines, I'm not one of those people who turned their nose up at a raucous, fun-loving crowd. This is people on vacation, after all. And I was excited to show my wife a more energetic style of cruising than what she had experienced in the past. As we continued to walk around, it became increasingly obvious which areas Royal Caribbean had decided to pour some extra money into, and which areas they didn't. I wouldn't say there was any singular one place that was an outright disrepair, but there were plenty of examples of faded paints, chip railings, stained furniture, the sort of thing that you expect when a ship has been in operation for a while. It's bound to happen, so I don't particularly hold this against the cruise line, but it's still worth mentioning. The part I think you can hold against the cruise line, however, is cleanliness, which was a major issue for me on this sailing. In fact, I'd go so far as to say, as I've never sailed on a ship where I had the matter of cleaning be this much of an issue before. In ship common areas, there were lots of unattended spills, abandoned plates of food, and especially abandoned cups and drinks in elevator and stairways sitting there for hours. I'd walk by a precariously placed set of chicken fingers in the morning and then see the same one sitting there on our way back from dinner. Due to the holiday timing of this cruise, call it a booze cruise, call it whatever you want, on this sailing the drinks were flowing constantly, which did lead to some obvious pitfalls. I like a good cocktail as much as the next guy. In fact, cruises are generally where I tend to drink the most, but the pace at which drinks were being served and handed out here screamed danger from the get-go. Rounds were being handed out at some points and given away for free, question mark, at a rate where my fellow passengers were essentially guaranteed to drink too much. I think it's one thing to turn a vacation into a fun, booze-heavy experience, like parties that drink around the world at Epcot, but it's another thing for the institution itself, in this case the cruise line, actively promoting and endorsing the behavior. And I understand guests pay the drink package so that they can have unlimited drinks, but the overall guest experience and safety has to be put first, especially for those who don't want to partake in that kind of behavior. And the domino effect of this was really simple. There were simply too many passengers who had too much to drink for the ship to effectively cater to meaning lots of cups and plates and towels and chairs, and yes, on a couple occasions, vomit strewn about the ship. 
we didn't have any issues with fellow passenger behavior. And again, I was actually excited to stay up late and party with the rest of our cruisers. But I think the staff to passenger ratio was clearly off or at least out of balance. And it was obvious to me that Royal was more interested in selling booze than they were in keeping the ship clean and orderly. Now, some of you may write off those experiences as a result of the short length of this cruise, which is fair as weekend cruises generally tend to be more booze heavy. But something that I think should remain consistent regardless of the length of the sailing is the quality of the food. And let me tell you, the food I had on this sailing was legitimately some of the worst cruise food I'd ever had. And remember, we had the unlimited dining package, meaning I'm not talking about main dining food where you expect the quality to be a little dodgy, but specialty restaurant food. I'll start with the positives. The one real saving grace among all the ship's venues was Giovanni's Italian Kitchen, a nicely decorated restaurant with good service, well-presented food and a flavorful menu. On our first night on the ship, we enjoyed a nice bottle of wine, some classic Italian starters, and a specialty pizza that while not revelatory, went down very easily and with a smile. It was a good restaurant and we probably should have gone back, but we decided to try some other things. For breakfast, we went to the main dining room and unfortunately encountered frustratingly slow service with very mediocre dishes served at room temperature, which is just one of my cruising pet peeves. The ultimate red flag for us, mind you, was when my wife ordered a side of cheese grits, an item listed on their breakfast menu, and the waiter said, ooh, I wouldn't do that, they're disgusting. With high praise like that from the ship's own staff, we decided to not come back to the main dining room the next morning. For lunch, we ate at some of the various venues at Coco Cay, the highlight of which were some mozzarella sticks that were delicious, but had an unfair advantage of being fried cheese, which is inherently delicious in any and every form. That being said, all the food at Coco Cay was really good. It was fresh. The buffet was nice. It was probably the highlight of the trip for us. Dinner that night was in Chops Grill, the ship's steakhouse that normally charges $50 per person in addition to your cruise fare. And for prices like that, I was expecting a pretty good meal. Unfortunately, I am not exaggerating here when I say that my steak was one of the most disappointing cuts of meat I'd ever ordered. I'm not kidding. I've had better steaks at Chili's and Applebee's than I had here. The steak here tasted simultaneously of freezer burn and also just like being burnt. Service in this restaurant was interestingly worse than in Giovanni's and maybe even worse than what we had in the main dining room for breakfast, where really the most attention we got was from the ship's photographer selling photos than the actual waiter. The best thing we ate at Chops was the dessert, which was admittedly quite good, but couldn't carry the rest of the meal on its back. Comparing this to my wife's experience at Cagney's, the steakhouse on board Norwegian ships, the difference in quality was honestly staggering. We also did stop by Johnny Rockets once for a burger and a tuna melt, both of which were fine. Again, the best item here was dessert, a milkshake that was served with love and a smile, two of the things that make a world of difference in a guest-facing industry like cruising. Overall, the food experience on board the Freedom of the Seas just wasn't up to par for what I came to expect from Royal. And while I understand cruise lines are incentivized to charge extra for upscale food, something I'm happy to pay for, by the way, you have to ensure that that food is actually as good as the price tag suggests. Now, changing topics. A lot of reviewers like to say that you can really tell the quality of a cruise line, not by how they respond to successes, but by how they respond to failures. And by this metric, Royal Caribbean did not fare so well. On the first day of our sailing, our stateroom toilet decided to take up the funny habit of not flushing. Now, I've been on a lot of cruises. I understand that this can happen and that the plumbing system of ships is incredibly complicated. So I did what any sensible person would do. I called maintenance and I told them about the issue. We were told it was too late in the evening for someone to come by. It was like 11 o'clock and that they'd send someone in the morning to come fix it. Not ideal considering one of us had already made a latrine based deposit, but at least the issue would be fixed the next day. After returning to our stateroom about midday the next day, we were surprised to find the issue unresolved. The toilet still wasn't flushing and our mess was still present. We called maintenance again and told them about the issue and we were again assured that somebody would get to it right away. We left the room again and continued to enjoy our time on the ship, coming back to the room that evening and finding once again 
that the toilet had not been fixed. A third call to maintenance and a perhaps unnecessarily stern amount of complaining eventually summoned someone up to the room to fix the issue. But the degree to which something like this was handled was just not acceptable by my standards, or I think most people's standards. Now, I would be lying if I said I didn't have fun on this cruise, because I did. We explored Coco Cay for the first time, had a blast checking out the water park, the various venues, and all the different beaches. We watched the World Cup by the pool and enjoyed one of the best sports watching experiences of my life. In an atmosphere like no other, we're out at sea, it was amazing. We had some tasty drinks, participated in lots of trivia, met plenty of new friends, and made memories that we will always cherish. But a lot of this enjoyment was done in spite of, and not because of, Royal Caribbean. This cruise felt like we, the passengers, were making most of the fun, and the cruise line was simply there to extract profit when need be and slide a drink across the table. And with a business model like that, my fear is that Royal Caribbean will devolve from an industry leader in guest experience to an industry leader in profit margins. There's a lot more that I could say about this cruise, but I understand with as many ships and sailings as Royal Caribbean offers, my experience won't necessarily match a lot of yours. I do still intend to sail with Royal at some point in the future, and I still have a lot of great memories to battle against the bad ones. But if I'm being honest, if things don't change for Royal Caribbean soon, and with so many other competitors in the market to sail with, it might be a while before I willingly sail underneath the crown and anchor again. I'm really curious to hear your thoughts if you've sailed with Royal Caribbean recently. If you agree or disagree with what I said, please leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I've been Adam with Cruise Ship Blitz, and I look forward to seeing you wherever the seas may take you.